welcomes to another episode of my Liverpool series here on Football Manager 2019. Today we are playing Chelsea after that absolutely mental game against Juventus. If you haven't seen that in the last episode, go and check it out because it was it was quite something. Uh, today, like I say, we're playing Chelsea and I thought we'd start off by showing you the dynamics um, because it's something that we haven't really touched on in this save so far. Obviously with all the really good season that we're having, uh, the match cohesion is really good at the moment, obviously with the tactical understanding and whatnot. Uh, dressing room atmosphere is excellent, the players are enjoying playing together and we're all sort of pulling in the same direction. As it says there, managerial support is very good as well. James Milner's a little bit concerned at the moment because he feels he needs to leave first team football. Um, I tried to sort out the issue, but um, I didn't exactly appease him to the level that I could have done. So he, he's still quite concerned that he's not getting the game time that he should. And as reliable as he is, I haven't really played him. And to be honest, if we're doing a second season, he might be one of those that I look to move on. I'll wait and see. Um, but let's look at the hierarchy and the team leaders in this team. Oh, James Milner, yeah, I, I don't want to be upsetting him too often. Team leaders, Henderson, Milner and Salah in here as well. Obviously, you've got the new players and the younger players that haven't quite found their way within the squad yet. Brahimi still hasn't settled, despite the fact that he's been here since August, which is a bit of a worry. And then everybody else kind of filters into that influential category. I thought Van Dijk would have been a little bit higher, but evidently not. Um, so yeah, and then we've got a few influential players as well, like Fabinho, Cater, Gomez, players who uh, some are new to the club and some obviously quite younger players as well. Moreno is only influential, which says that he's probably not well liked within the team. But never mind if you look at the social groups as well. So most of the players are in the core social group, which is weird, despite the fact that Brahimi and Camacho are only other players. They've actually fitted quite well. So all that stuff I was saying about them not settling in is actually untrue because they seem to have settled in quite well. Um, Giovanni Simeone is a bit of a loner. Bless him. So um, never mind. Hopefully with a bit of time, he will settle in um, to the club. And everybody else is in the second social group. So maybe Milner, Henderson and all that lot. Maybe they're like the, the orange, the Ribena club. That's what James Milner drinks, isn't it? So maybe these lot are like the Ribena club. And then everybody else... Um, Everybody else goes out and drinks like proper stuff. I don't know. I don't really know what I'm saying. But anyway, we've uh, that's that's the dynamic side of it. So um, we should look at that a little bit more um, as well towards the end of the season. But so uh, it's time to turn our focus towards the Chelsea game. So let's get into that and uh, take a look at the team. Actually, before we get into the team, a couple of things to tell you about. Um, Giovanni Simeone is going to be missing this game. He's got a tight cuff. So uh, he's not quite going to be right for this game, so he's going to have to miss out. And Pepe is out for about a week with a twisted knee, so until it untwists himself, he is not going to be in contention, unfortunately. Scratch that, Simeone is in contention. So uh, what do I know? Okay, so here we go then. Um, it's pretty much the same team as always. You know it by now if you've watched the save since the start. Um, I was debating to go for like a 4-3-3. Formation have like three centre mids instead of a number 10, but I decided against it. We're at home, we might as well be positive. So here we go, let's get into the game. Um, Simeone should be able to get through this game with minimal complications, they should say. So um, yeah, hopefully we'll be able to last the whole thing. Um, Chelsea go with a 4-3-3. They've signed Coman, Pul Coman Pulisic and De Ligt. So they've had a pretty good transfer. Um, What's the word I'm looking for? They've done some pretty good transfers, so that's what I'm trying to say. I think what I might do is I might be aggressive. Uh, the media have given you a lot of credit. Go out there and put on a worthy display. That's starting to get a little bit less effective because I'm starting to use it a bit more. Um, less players are responding to it because it's not so fresh anymore. Obviously, if you use the same team talk over and over again, it kind of just loses its um, ability to actually motivate them. So... Delict's giving it away to Mane, right, it's Cater. This could be the first proper chance of the game. Cater looks for Alexander-Arnold on the right-hand side. He plays it across, headed away by Delict. Now back in by Cater, and that is a lovely finish. 1-0 in front, first time on the volley. Naby Cater with his seventh goal of the season. That is awesome. Cater looks for Alexander-Arnold on the right. He's in eight 
because of space Alonso goes out doesn't get out there in time to lift heads it away and then Kate's her first time outside of the foot wallop straight into the bottom corner with the first proper chance of the game to dominate the shot count 8 to all 12 to 0 bloody hell that was the first proper highlight I've seen but Chelsea can have a chance here they haven't been in the game at all and they nearly equalised through Christensen but this is an awesome first half so far, I have to say. 13 shots to 2. But we need to start being a bit more clinical. I think we need to start putting these chances away. Right, Robertson with a throw. Looks for Cater again. He's been really, really impressive today. Mane flicks it away from whoever number 5 is. Firmino takes it all the way around. Pulls it back in for Salah, who has like the easiest finish in the world. Because Chelsea can't defend. And we are 2-0 in front, Mo Salah against his old club. Let's have a look at this again, because it just looked like the easiest goal we could ever score. Firmino just decides to go for a jog around the pitch, no one goes near him. And then Alonso just doesn't defend. <laughs> and Salah's there for a tap-in. Liverpool to Chelsea nil. I mean, we fully deserve this. But this could really, this could virtually put us into pole position in the title race. If we win this, I haven't even looked. I assume there's still like an eight point gap because we haven't played any league games. I'm going to be passionate. Um, I'm very happy with the way things are going. Keep it up. That has arguably been our best performance of the season. That first half against Shakhtar was very good. But this, in terms of like just getting it done, although we've wasted a lot of chances, this has been a very, very good display as Alexander Arnold whips it in. Kepa pushes it away and Chelsea eventually get it clear is anyone actually going to get to that ball that was actually quite close there we go well done sports interactive chelsea have got miguel and we're on that is a great bargain if you want great bargains and you're managing like a top tier club and you want a brilliant player for under eight million buy miguel Almiron. i got him in my spurs save for five million from atlanta he is awesome I think we're going to make a substitution now. I think it's Henderson for Fabinho because he's looking a little bit tired. I was thinking about maybe putting Wayne Aldem on and going to a midfield three and taking Fabinho off. I might leave that for a little bit. Why are they playing with more caution? They're 2 0 down. They've got to go for it, surely. Unless they're thinking damage limitation. Right, I'm going to bring Wayne Aldem on for Firmino and then I'm going to go to a conventional. 4-3-3 three, three. and I think we'll have Wijnaldum as the we'll keep him as the advanced playmaker anybody else really tired not that I can see shall I bring William Jose on for a bit I don't really know Robertson's looking a little bit knackered as well I don't know it's not worth I don't think it's worth risking Moreno for 10 minutes that's how much I don't trust him but it looks like we are cruising to a comfortable victory I said that against Juventus and look what happened then. Chelsea might get one here. It's Pulisic. Pulisic should have scored. Had like the easiest chance he'll ever have. And skied it. But it looks like we're going to make it another very vital victory. 20 seconds to go. I mean, Chelsea aren't going to score two in 20 seconds. Pulisic. Tackled by Robertson. Eventually, I don't really know what's happening with the ball. Or was Robertson in trouble? Is that a red card? I might have to play the next game with Moreno. It's a long talking to. And he's got away with it. My heart was in my ass then. <laughs> Full time. 2-0. There we go. Awesome stuff. Cater and Salah with the goals. Awesome display. Very nice victory. Well done. I should probably be a bit more enthusiastic than that. But yeah, that's a massive, massive win. Chelsea down to fourth. We still got an eight point advantage because uh, Man City is still there. But um, yeah, that is awesome. I think Chelsea are pretty much out of it now. Uh, sorry, he's unhappy. Good for him. Uh, we'll have to play a whole 500k if Andy Robertson makes another appeal. All right, we won't play him then. <laughs> nah, but seriously, um, that'd be Kate. Uh, oh, for God's sake. I didn't think I was particularly good. It seems we differ about what makes good before. I thought you were excellent, mate. Um, the last performance did impress me, but if you think you can do better, then I can't wait to see it. Okay, awesome. He was brilliant. 8.3 rating. He ran the thing. Obviously not happy with his performance. Right, let's look at the old table. So with seven games to go. We're eight points ahead. We can still bottle it. Um, Tottenham with it. Tottenham lost. Oh, interesting. Tottenham lost against Southampton. Oh, okay. So I think it's pretty much between ourselves.
I can still bottle it. They can still bottle it. So I don't really know. I think Tottenham and Chelsea are very much outsiders now. They could reduce that gap to... They could get 67 points if they win their game in hand. Assuming they're not playing each other. So if one of them gets to 67, they're still in it slightly. But yeah, I think it's, it's, ours, it's definitely ours to lose. With seven games to go, it's ours to screw up. So we are in a very, very good position. I think what we'll do... Oh, we've got Manchester City. In the quarterfinal, I completely missed that. I completely missed that. I, <laughs> I think what we'll do, we'll come back for the second leg of Manchester City and maybe Southampton as well, or I might do the Champions League as its own thing. I don't really know. We'll come back for Man City definitely, and we'll see what happens with that. And then we we probably got, oh, we got Man City at home on the last day of the season. Ooh, hopefully, we'll have the title wrapped up by then. I don't know, but we'll come back for the second leg of that tie, and uh, we'll see what happens. So that's going to be the end of today's episode. Um, thank you very much for watching. Please leave a like on there if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you are new to the channel. Comment below any thoughts and suggestions you may have. If you'd like to check me out on social media and check out my other channels, the links to those will be in the description below. But thank you once again. And I will see you for the Manchester City game. I honestly don't know how I managed to skip 